Good day folks, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at some ND filters for the Mavic Air 2 and the Mavic Mini. We're going to talk about what they're for, how to use them, and how to install them. So let's just jump right in and take a closer look. So if you're new to drones, maybe you've picked up the Mavic Mini or the Mavic Air 2, you might have been reading different Facebook groups and different forums, and you hear a lot about ND filters. You might be wondering what they're for and how to use them. ND filters are probably one of the most common accessories that people pick up for new drones, so that's what we're going to focus on today. We're going to talk about what they're for, how to install them, and how to use them. In front of me here, I've got the Mavic Air 2 and I've got the Mavic Mini. The Mavic Mini has been out for about six months now, and ND filters were released by Freewell Gear shortly after that, but it's only been about a month that we can fully make use of them due to an update in the DJI Fly app that allows us to go in and manually change our settings. The Mavic Air 2 has been out for about a month and again Freewell has made a nice ND filter set for it as well. So no matter what drone you have and you're currently flying you can follow along to this video. I'm going to be using the Mavic Air 2 for demonstrations but because they both use the DJI Fly app it'll be the same for both drones. So just to get it out of the way, let's talk about what ND filters are for. So when it comes to cinematography, there's a rule that a lot of people follow called the 180 degree rule. And basically the rule is to do with motion blur. When you watch a video, if there's a little bit of motion blur with things that are moving fast, it looks a little bit more natural to the eye. When you don't have motion blur, it can look a little jittery and looks really unnatural. So the 180 degree rule is basically you want to set your shutter speed double that of your frame rate. So for example, if you're going to be filming in 4K as the resolution at 30 frames per second, you want to set your shutter speed at 1 60th of a second. So that's a setting that you have to go in and change manually within the settings. When you're filming an automatic, the software and the drone is going to automatically choose the best settings to get the best exposure. So what happens though on bright days, your shutter speed is really, really high. So there's going to be no motion blur at all. Now as a new pilot, that's not really something I would worry about too much. Just enjoy your drone, capture some footage. This is something you can always play around with once you've learned things well and you want to grow a little bit. So like I said, when you're shooting in automatic mode, it's going to set your shutter speed really high. So what you have to do is go into manual settings and manually set your shutter speed. But what happens is, if it's a bright day and you set your shutter speed to 1 60th of a second, your image is going to be way overexposed. It's going to be blown right out. Now on high-end cameras, you can compensate that by adjusting the aperture. But most point-and-shoot cameras, smartphones, and most consumer drones, the aperture is fixed. For example, on the Mavic Air 2, you can see here, it says the aperture rate on the lens there, it's 2.8. So we can't change the aperture to adjust the exposure. But that's where ND filters come in. Basically an ND filter is just a dark piece of glass that goes over the lens, basically limits how much light can enter the camera. So in a nutshell, that's basically all ND filters are used for. It just allows you to set the proper shutter speed and get the proper exposure. Now some of these filters have polarizers built into them as well, and I'll explain that quickly at the end of the video. When you take a look at ND filters, they all have a value. For example, in this Mavic Air 2 set by Freewell, we have an ND4. ND8, ND16. Then when we go up to the ones with polarizers, you can see we have an ND8, ND16, ND32, all the way up to ND64. So depending on the brightness of the day, that's when you're going to choose what ND filter you want to use. Most commonly, the ones that you're going to want to use for cinematography are ND4, ND8, ND16, and maybe an ND32 on really bright days. Now the trick is, especially as a new pilot, is picking which ND filter to use. In the beginning, it's kind of trial and error. You might start with an ND4, but if you find your image is still overexposed, you might move up to the ND8. Once you've been doing it a while, usually you can judge by the day. You might uh, look at the sun and how bright it is and decide right away that it's an ND8. So that will just come with time. In the beginning, it's just kind of trial and error. Now we're going to go ahead and I'm going to show you how to install them on both the Mavic Air 2 and the Mavic Mini, and then we'll go into the app and I'll show you how to set things up in the app. Uh, but just keep in mind that when flying a drone, you don't always need to have ND filters on there. Like I said, ND filters are for adding motion blur to moving objects. So a good case in point, if you're filming a car driving down a street, definitely an ND filter would be beneficial. If you're doing any kind of tracking where the drone is tracking you, maybe you've got it on the follow mode, definitely again an ND filter will be very beneficial. If you're skimming across a field or a tree canopy, again there's a lot of motion so an ND filter is beneficial. If you're flying extremely slow through a forest, you'll probably get no effect from having an ND filter on there. There has to be a fair amount of movement. And again if you're up really high, say you're right up to the maximum 400 feet and you're filming the ground down below and you're flying even at a decent speed, the ground's going to be moving very slowly below you. 
Again, you're not going to get that much effect from an ND filter, so it's not really all that important. We're going to start with the Mavic Air 2. I'll show you how to put them on. Now with the Mavic Air 2, around the lens here we have a ring, so we have to remove that first. Basically, you just want to hold the gimbal and gently turn that ring counterclockwise. Once you see it turn, you can see you can pull it right off. You're then going to take the appropriate ND filter that you've decided you're going to use. I'm just going to put the ND4 on. You can see on the back of the filter there's little claws. We're just going to line them up with the holes there on the camera. So you can see there it's kind of sitting crooked right now. So once it's in there, we're just going to turn it just like that. Now it's locked in. Now that's basically it for the Mavic Air 2. So we're going to take a look at the Mavic Mini now. Now the way the ND filters go onto the Mavic Mini are a little bit different. Because it is such a small little camera, there's no removable lens there on the camera. So what Freewell here has done is they've made a clip system that kind of clips over top of the camera. So when we go to install the filter, if you look at the back of the gimbal, there's vents back there, or little things that look like vents. So what we want to do is take the claw and insert it down into those vents. So just like that, you can see the ND filter just clips on over top. So let's go ahead here and we'll power up the DJI Fly app for the Mavic Air 2 and then I'll show you how to adjust the settings. So we've got the DJI Fly app running here and down here in the bottom right hand corner, this is something new that they added just about a month ago for the Mavic Mini and of course what's available for the Mavic Air 2. You can see here it says auto. So what we want to do is put it into manual mode so we can go in and adjust the shutter speed. But like I said, you want to double your frame rate. So make sure you go and set your frame rate first. So you can see here we're filming at 30 frames per second. So that means we want to set our shutter speed at 1 1 60th of a second. We're going to click on that auto button there and that's going to switch us over to manual settings. So you can see there in the middle we have our shutter speed listed. That's the one we're going to be changing. Right now it's 1 over 320 so we're going to adjust that to 1 over 60. Just like that there. So now we're ready to go and fly and you'll just go ahead and film like normal. Now like I said the image looks a little bit dark. That's just because we're indoors. Once we were to take this drone outside then it would be perfect. Now say you like to film at 60 frames per second. Let's change that to 60 frames per second. We would then go into our shutter speed and again we want it double so we would just change that to 1 over 120. And just to mention here like I already said if say you had an ND8 on it and you've set your shutter speed accordingly, but you find the image is still a little too dark, you would just bump down to the next ND filter. So for example, if you did have the 8 on, you would put the ND4 on. So that's basically it for ND filters. Uh, but before we go here, I just want to touch base with what these polarizers are. You can see some of these filters in the 8-pack set by Freewell have polarizers built into them. They're circular polarizers. That means you can actually adjust the polarization by spinning the dial on them. Polarizers help you get rid of reflections in shiny surfaces such as water. But these polarizers are also good for other scenarios as well other than water. For example, if you're filming over a metal, grass can be a little bit reflective as well. And once you cut out the reflection, you end up getting better saturation and more natural colors. Well folks, that's basically it. That's my explanation of what ND filters are and a quick demonstration on how to use them. If you have any questions about ND filters, just post them down in the comments below. Either myself or somebody else within the community will happily answer them. I'd like to thank you for watching this video. Hopefully you got some value out of it. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos and we'll see you in the next one.